uh, it's really difficult to be the last before lunch. <laughs> so, and I worry a little bit because it's my first speech in front of such a big uh, audience of experts, but I really will try to do my best. Um, I was t would like to start from a little bit statistics. And I think I need a clicker to use my presentation as well. Thank you. Ah, it's here. Okay. Uh, so, I would like to start from statistics. And what statistics tell us? That every seven minutes, Internet Watch Foundation found one web page that show uh, child sexual abuse. What does it mean? That during my speech, this organization will find at least one such page. And what's even worse, that 78% uh, of these materials show girls. And more and more, these materials are self-made. Uh, it gives us information that girls are f forced and uh, involved to make these pictures by themselves, by people in their countries or, or in other countries, because this risk doesn't have any borders. And what's even worse is that the biggest part of these cases, these crimes, remain undiscovered. It means that uh, victims keep silence for their whole life. Why? Because they uh, feel scared, they feel uh, ashamed, they uh, don't know that it's crimes, uh, and also they don't know that they can ask for some help and that they have right to be protected. So no reporting means no investigation. No investigation means no official statistics and police. No statistics means no steps from the government. A vicious circle. Uh, two years ago, I was at the conference of the Council of Europe in Ukraine, where I saw for the first time a video of Europol say no. I was so much shocked by this video that I wanted to shout at every corner in my country about these risks to protect girls in Ukraine from sexting, grooming and extortion. But shouting never helped. So I decided to launch first in Ukraine awareness raising campaign about sexting, grooming and extortion named Stop Sexting. And uh, we were able to train more than 21,000 of children in my country during a few days. Uh, we also received a great support from all our country, from different industries and from mass media. And today I would like to share with you my experience and I hope that these 10 steps can be valuable in your work in your countries as well. So we start. This is logo of our project. And the first one, set the problem urgency. So what has to be beginning? Uh, I translated this video of Europol uh, say no information campaign into Ukrainian. What was my reason? I just wanted to give this information to every adult in my country to show them that this risk is already here in our house and in our cities. And even if parents don't know that this risk exists, it doesn't mean the children don't face it. So my reason was to give information to parents and to adults about the risks. But after this, more and more journalists started to ask us, our Children Commissioner Office, about this information. So I decided to develop a brochure and publish it online about these risks, what to do, how to pre prevent, and all this basic information. And I hoped that it will help. But uh, as much uh, people receive more information about the problems, teachers started to write me and ask to come to their schools and hold lessons for their children. So we moved to develop an educational program. And I'm sure that everyone in this audience knows that when we hold a lesson uh, between, in front of children, it means that we compete with smartphones and with laptops or with iPads. I didn't want to compete with anyone uh, during this way. So I started to think about format. And I found out that dialogue could be a right decision, right decision. So I developed a dialogue like a lesson plan of how we can hold this dialogue with children. We started from watching this shocking video of Europol, then move it to discussing extortion and grooming with uh, strangers online. And then I ra raise a question to children. Okay, but how about sexting with people who you know? Is it okay? 
And then we moved to work uh, in groups. I didn't want to scare children. I really wanted to engage them and to share with them information. And you know, this dialogue works. And I also tried to laugh with children during our lessons and told them, even if you will forget everything that I will tell you during this lesson, please remember about billboard test. It means that never send or post any materials that you are not ready to see at the billboard near your school. And uh, we started to hold these lessons in schools. But at the next stage, more and more and more teachers started to write me and ask me to come to schools. And in Ukraine now we have 7 million of children. Uh, at least 3.5 million of these children can receive our lesson according to age. So at some day I understood that it will be just impossible for me alone to hold this lesson to all these children. So I started to think what I can do. And I understood that um, at some stage all of us have to invite colleagues to fight together because the problem is too big to fight alone. Uh, so I decided to launch national awareness raising campaign Stop Sexting that I already mentioned and invite teachers to this work. And it sounded good, but when I started to invite teachers, they told me, yeah, it's a good idea, we really support, let's do it, but we don't want to do it in schools. And I was surprised. Why? Uh, but during this discussion, I really understand that teachers in my country have some fears. And uh, these fears were children's parents. They really worried about their reaction. Because in Ukraine we don't have uh, classes like a sexual education or something like this. Nobody in schools talk about sex, talk about sex and grooming, extortion, sorry, what's this? Uh, so to keep calm our teachers, uh, we receive recommendations from the Ministry of Education. And teachers uh, were really happy to receive this document and they joined our initiative. Uh, together with this, I understood that teachers are a great resource and great uh, opportunity, but we have to unite other participants. So we, hold, we started this awareness raising campaign together with the Ministry of Education on Safer Internet Day. It allowed us to come to every school in our country. Additionally, I hold a negotiation with telecom and, and um, internet providers because I'm really sure uh, that uh, it's not their charity, it's their corporate social responsibility and it's their part of working this uh, children online protection. And together with this, I really believe in power of, of mass media. So I took part in TV shows, I prepare articles for newspapers, but we have to be careful because the main aim of mass media sell hot news. So we have to work with them and educate them how to show these stories uh, safely for children and without additional victimization. Uh, is it the end? No. Uh, I really understand that we have to impo impro improve our tools. So I was really interested in feedbacks from teachers. But how to motivate adults give feedback? So we developed certificate problem, a program and some contest for teachers. It means that if teacher would like to receive the certificate, they have to follow three points. First of all, obviously, hold the lesson with children. Uh, second, post online uh, on Facebook or Instagram uh, some posts about how it was without faces of children with hashtag. And the last one, it was filling up the, this form. So we received in one month more than 800 of, of feedbacks from teachers all around Ukraine. And tell the truth, it's when I was reading these feedbacks, sometimes I even cry. Because uh, teachers um, wrote us a lot of thankful words for these materials. Uh, they also told us about their feelings, how they worried to talk with children about this. And also they told me uh, real stories of children and tell us through that feedbacks really cost all efforts that we invested in this project. But it's also not the end. At this, uh, after receiving this feedback, 
I understood the teacher really asked about additional materials for smaller children, and also we received a big um, inquiry for materials for children with disability, and we are working on this now. It's a really big challenge, I think, for every country. But we started, we decided to start from smaller children. I think I have five minutes less on speakers, so if I could have, have five minutes additional, it would be great. Uh, so gamification. I understand that um, gamification is a great tool and uh, I thought why not to try use gamification even when discuss such a difficult and scary topics as sex and grooming and extortion and it works. So we created two quests for children and it starts when teachers give to every child a paper envelope uh, with a piece of real stories of victims. And then children have to do different tasks and uh, find another letters together with classmates and find the whole story. Then they got QR code to this video of Europol, give feedbacks in form and discuss with teachers. So what lessons learn from this step is that uh, we have to follow our clients or customers, children, when we develop materials for them. Uh, about teachers. Um, schools really like when volunteers come to school and hold some lessons, it's really easy, it's really quickly, nobody have to care, but I really believe in empowering teachers. Why? Because empowering teachers, we really empower children. Because volunteers come and left, but teacher can be our early adapters who will hold the next lessons, who can educate more teachers, more children, more adults, so I really uh, sure that we have to involve teachers in this work. And together with this, I understand that empowering teachers, we empowering girls and teens. Uh, because I'm absolutely sure that is in these 1,000 schools participants who take a part in these uh, activities, at least one adult in every school know what sex and grooming is extortion and what they have to do. And together with this, uh, uh, we can see that now connection and trust between children and parents uh, go down. So teachers also gave, gave us feedback that these lessons helped them to increase trust between teacher and children because nobody talked with children about sex and grooming and extortion at home in my country. So now I know that if this child became a victim and will not dare to talk with parents, she or he will come to teacher and he will be her own helpline. And uh, some more, my last point uh, about caring, not to pass behind. Uh, I showed you uh, this connection like a butterfly effect between small video that I just cannot uh, see it and just pass behind. And uh, this small video led to developing a national strategy of internet safety in Ukraine. Because I cared, because I really wanted to change something. Uh, we developed the campaign and then I decided to raise this question at the national level and I attracted uh, our new government to these issues, I attracted our partners internationally to this problem and now I lead in developing a national strategy of internet safety in my country. So it means uh, if you take a part, uh, if you really would like to change something, everything is possible and the world is changing. So just do what you can and the world will be changed. Thank you.